this video we are going to discuss about diac okay so diac is again a very uh, useful component for power electronics applications so we are going to discuss about the symbol the structure the cara and the most important points from diac topic okay so diac is actually the abbreviation of diode for alternating current okay so it is diode for alternating current so alternating current is ac diode this di is taken so you are getting diac so this is how the name is derived okay now uh, if you see the symbol of a diac i'm going to draw the symbol so the symbol of diac is like this this actually somewhat similar to triac but only difference is that there is only two terminals in diac we know that triac is having three terminals here there is only two terminals that is mt1 and mt2 okay so this is how the diac symbol is looking like okay now you uh, if you draw the structure of a diac it will be like this before seeing the structure you should be knowing that there is only two terminals for a diac and the most important application of a diac is that it is used for triggering of triac triggering of triac so before uh, seeing the uh, structure we are actually going to see some more details okay so the most important application is triggering of triac that is the use of diac is for triggering of triac that is whenever we are using triac in order to trigger or in order to turn on this triac we are using the diac okay so that is the most important application or use of a diac next we are going to see uh, the classification of diacs but another important thing is that here if you see there are two terminals right and for a for a simple diode if you draw there is also two terminals which is anode and cathode so this is the case for a simple diode this is the case for a diac now if you see the physical structure of a diac it is somewhat similar to that of a diode because diode is also having two terminals diac is also having two terminals so physically in appearance diac is actually looking like that of a diode semiconductor diode okay next we are going to see the types of diac so diac can be actually classified as two types it is symmetrical and asymmetrical so symmetrical di diac means we know that the diac uh, or this type of thyristor devices like triac and all these devices is having forward breakover or breakdown voltage and also reverse breakdown voltage right so for a symmetrical diac now while discussing the cara you will get a very clear idea of breakover voltages uh, in the forward bias condition and also in the reverse bias condition okay anyway just know that for a symmetrical diac the forward and the reverse breakover voltages are same forward and reverse break over or breakdown both terms can be used voltage or voltages are same okay so same forward and reverse break over or breakdown voltages whereas for a asymmetrical diac it will be uh, it will be different and most commonly seen type of voltage rating this is voltage rating okay voltage rating is this 20 by 18 so 20 will be the forward breakover voltage in one direction 18 will be the forward uh, that is breakover voltage in the other direction okay so 20 will be the uh, breakover voltage in forward direction 18 will be the breakover voltage in the reverse direction okay so this is how you can classify diacs there are two types of diac symmetrical and asymmetrical okay another applications of diac is that it can be used as oscillators or used in oscillators and it can be used for low power triggering most commonly it is used for triggering of diac okay for
triggering of triac and also it is used in oscillators okay now if you combine together diac and triac so we have seen that this diacs can be used for triggering of triacs right so a diac plus a triac is called a quadrac okay write it little more neatly so a diac plus a triac is called a quadrac okay so this combo or this combination is called a quadrac okay so these are the most uh, important points while discussing about a triac okay sorry a diac okay so the diac is actually diode for alternating current so very clearly this is a device which is working in alternating current or ac in physical appearance it will be looking like that of a semiconductor diode because it is only having two terminals there are two terminals mt1 and mt2 and this diac is uh, mainly used for applications like in oscillators and also in low power triggering circuits most commonly it is used for the triggering of triacs and when we use these two devices together or components together you call that as a quadrac okay next we are going to see the physical structure of a diac so the structure the structure of a diac is like this there is a p1 or a p layer on to which a n1 layer is diffused and then there is n2 then there is p2 and on to this p2 you are diffusing a n3 okay so this is how the structure of a okay so i am going to draw the entry here so this is n3 okay so this is the structure of a diac there are two terminals and the terminals are been taken out from here this is mt2 and from here you will be taking mt1 okay so the terminals are mt1 and mt2 and this is the the structure so how many layers are there 1 2 3 4 5 layers are there so the the main difference between a diac and a triac is that for a triac there is mt1 mt2 and a gate terminal here there is only two terminals okay and next we are going to see the working and the care of diac okay so this is the uh, the physical structure i have actually redrawn the physical structures in two different ways by considering these two junctions there is these two layers in a different way okay so i have to explain the two modes of operation okay so there are two modes of operation in which in the first mode so this is mode 1 and this is mode 2 you can consider it this as mode 1 and this is mode 2 operation okay here in this mode 1 operation you are going to give a relatively positive uh, supply or positive potential to mt1 as compared to mt2 so mt1 will be positive and mt2 will be negative okay so this is mode 1 and here you can see that there are three junctions there is j1 there is j2 and j3 so when mt1 is connected to positive means it is connected to mt1 is connected to p1 right so this device will be this junction j1 will be forward biased here also mt2 is negative and is connected to n3 so the junction j3 will be also forward biased but the junction j2 will be reverse biased so that is going to be the case for mode 1 operation okay so in the mode 1 what all things will be happening mt1 is positive and mt2 is negative here the junctions j1 j3 will be forward biased j2 will be reverse biased 
okay so these are the things which will be happening in the mode 1 operation okay next for the mode 2 operation and you can see that clearly j1 is forward bias j3 is forward bias but the device is actually not conducting because the j2 is reverse bias but after some point what will happen the j2 junction will undergo a breakdown and then the current will start to flow and the current flow direction will be from this mt1 to mt2 for the mode 1 case okay next let us see the mode 2 case in the mode 2 operation we are going to give the mt2 this mt2 a relatively positive potential as compared to mt1 so mt1 will be negative mt2 will be positive you can see that for this case i have considered here n1 see this n1 i have considered and here this p2 i have considered okay so n1 p1 n2 p2 here the junctions is again j1 is there j2 is there and j3 is there you can see n1 is connected to a negative potential then p2 is connected to a positive potential so here for the mode 2 mt2 is positive here mt1 is positive here mt2 is positive then mt1 is negative which all junctions are forward biased j1 and j3 junctions are clearly forward biased why n1 is connected to negative and p1 is connected to positive so the junctions j1 and j3 again are forward biased but again j2 junction is reverse biased the same case will happen here initially the device will be only conducting in very less amount of current because of the minority carriers but after some time the j2 junction will undergo a breakdown and due to which the current will be uh, flowing in the device okay and the current flow direction will be in the opposite like this the current will be actually flowing okay mt2 to mt1 this is the current flow direction okay so these all things will be happening in the two modes this is mode 1 operation this is mode 2 operation so next uh, let us see the cara of this diac okay so this is actually very simple cara the cara is actually similar to that of triac also but here one thing is missing which is gate terminal okay so the gate triggering or gate currents is not actually present in the cara so the cara will be like this there is a current i there is a voltage v this this in this mode we'll be considering or in this quadrant we'll be drawing the mode one operation this quadrant will be drawing the mode two operation okay so initially in the mode one operation the current will be very less because the j2 junction is reverse biased but after the breakdown of the junction j2 okay i hope you can see it very clearly okay so after the breakdown of the junction j2 the current will be starting to conduct and the current will go to the maximum value okay so at this point what is happening the breakdown is happening i'm going to mark the voltage as vbo1 this is the breakdown uh, voltage in the positive quadrant after which the junction j2 will be undergoing breakdown okay so this is the forward breakover or breakdown voltage and in this case the mt1 is positive and mt2 is negative okay next case that is in the mode 2 here also initially the current will be lesser in value after a point there will be breakdown happening and then the current will rush okay so this is how you draw the second mode both are almost both are same actually the only difference is that the polarity of mt1 and mt2 is changing okay both are same care only okay and it is actually similar to that of the triac here what is happening mt2 is positive and mt1 is negative okay so this is the second breakover voltage you can call it is vbo2 okay so this is how the cara is looking like initially the current for this region that is in this region the current will be very less for this region here also the current is less but after the breakdown of the j2 junction the current will rush here also the current will that is the current will be uh, going to a high value okay 
This is how the current is going. Okay. So this is the working end, the cara of the diac. So there are two uh, regions or modes of operation. In the first mode, you are taking MT1 is positive, MT2 is negative. In the mode 2, you are taking MT2 is positive and MT1 is negative. Okay, so you are having only two terminals for diac. So in order to make the diac part, you have to apply polarities or uh, the biasing voltages to the two terminals. So that is what we are doing in the two cases. Okay, so in this video, we have actually seen the structure, CARA and the working of the diac. So I'm really hoping that you understood the topic. So uh, if yes, please do give it a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.